Joining me live now is a Queensland opposition leader, David Christofoli. David, good to see you. Uh, first of all, let's go back to the, the actual uh, problem uh, that this is trying to solve. How bad is the housing crisis in Queensland at the moment? It's critical. It's desperation levels. And I have met and sit, sat and listened to Queenslanders, working Queenslanders, living out of their car in a tent. And you ask yourself, how do we get to this? Now, if you look at the lot approval since 2015, a year-on-year -year fall from those numbers of around 33%. Now, that would have been an extra 60,000 dwellings in Queensland if we'd partnered with councils to deliver infrastructure to keep that going. So, in the end, the greatest gift a government can provide to do something about a housing crisis is to increase the supply, find ways to incentivise and partner and, let, and unleash councils to do that. Then there are two other things that we've been speaking out and putting forward, and one is the community housing sector. We haven't been able to unleash the community housing sector in Queensland. Other states have done a much better job of tapping into federal funding, so we've put forward some solutions on that. And the third is social housing. And when you read the reports from the likes of the Auditor General, it bells the cat on governments making big promises and not delivering on it. And there was a $2 billion housing investment fund that was announced 650 days ago. And the government's unable to point to one single Queenslander who is living under a unit that's been built as part of that. So we've got to do better. And uh, when you ask how bad the problem is, it's real, it's raw, and it's impacting working Queenslanders as well as the vulnerable. OK, so what is the solution in your view? Because obviously uh, supply uh, is, is part of the problem here and governments, taxpayers, can't build all the houses. Let's start with the... Um, with the, the plan on, you know, these 3,000 new dwellings. So you broadly support that, tax breaks for um, yeah. basically property developers? Yeah, we sure do, Laura. And I always said when I became opposition leader, if I saw something I liked, I'd be the first to say, yep, tick, let's back that. Um, so that looks pretty good on the surface. In fact, it's a policy position that we put forward in 2020, so it's pretty similar. So you're not going to get me playing childish games and saying uh, that that doesn't work. That's a, a great way of incentivising. Um, but in the end, there are many other levers the state has to pull. And I come back to the infrastructure one. There are councils across the state who are hungry to release land because they understand that's good for their regions. Businesses need workers. And in many cases, when I'm talking to businesses in the likes of Cairns, Townsville, Mackay, one of the biggest impediments to attracting people to those regions is the fact that they just can't house them. So councils know that. And councils want to deliver more supply. But in many cases, opening up your greenfield sites require infrastructure. So let's partner with them. Let's roll that out. Let's mm -hmm. allow the private sector to be able to unlock those lands. That allows young people into the market. It stops the feeding frenzy at the bottom as well. So at the moment, you've got first home buyers competing with people renting, competing with people who are long social housing waiting lists. There is a feeding frenzy at the bottom of the market. And if you can increase your supply, that can reduce that. It allows good, steady property price growth. It allows people to get into the market. That's how you deliver sustainable. Supply is the key. What about these ideas of, of rent caps and rent control, essentially, the government only allowing um, vendors or owners of properties to increase rents once a year? What effect is that going to have? Well, Laura, quite frankly, we don't know uh, because we haven't seen the detail and the government says that's uh, the same arrangement that other states have, uh, but in the last 24 hours there's been people who have raised different issues. So we're happy to sit down in a sober way and discuss that. Um, but I'll make a couple of points. The greatest gift you can give first homeowners and investors is certainty and the shambolic and chaotic decision-making of this in the last week has sent a shiver down the spine of anyone who's looking at Queensland. We had the Premier on Monday say that she was considering rental caps. On Tuesday, the Deputy Premier said he was going to link that to CPI. On Wednesday, the Premier said that was all a misunderstanding and people didn't quite understand what they were talking about. And now we have a different version about when rents can go up. 
Uh, I just say to all of your investors uh, watching throughout the country, don't give up on Queensland. This is a great state. And I can tell you there's a golden decade ahead that uh, people across this state are going to benefit from. Uh, we're going to keep fighting in the short term to keep the chaotic nature of this government at bay. It is chaos at the moment. Crisis to crisis, absolute chaos, uh, but better times are ahead. And we are determined to make sure there is stability in the ability for Queensland people to invest in this state, because I can tell you the fundamentals of this place are as good as you'll find. What about um, just rent control as a, as a kind of principle? Do you think this, this needs to be done from a top-down approach? Is this where government should be looking at it? It's that bad at the moment, whether temporary or, or more long-term? I tell you what, Laura, first and foremost, um, I'm not going to let the government's focus get off on the main thing that they are responsible for, mm. and that is supply of land and delivery of social housing and those yeah. partnership with the community housing sector. So there are a myriad of things that will be put forward. And I have always sat down and soberly looked at things. That, that's always been our style. But I'm not going to give them a get out of jail free card by saying that the fact that they have missed one in five of their targets from even the most basic of social housing, I'm not going to let them off the hook there because in the end, that is society's most vulnerable who are competing at the bottom end of the market and it's causing chaos. And I mentioned the community housing sector. We have some unbelievable providers in Queensland. They just throw their hands up and say, well, it's just all too hard. The mm -hmm. government seems philosophically opposed to allowing the community housing sector to do its job. Well, it happens in other states and it has happened across the political divide from New South Wales to Victoria and, and South Australia. I don't understand why that can't be unleashed in Queensland. And I come back to lot supply. That is the fundamental greatest gift a government can give a young kid who wants to get in the market or someone who wants to be able to rent, pay their taxes and go to work. And that is release supply. And I'm not going to let them off the hook. 33% fall year on year since those numbers in 2015. That's nearly 60,000 extra houses that should be in Queensland today. That'd help. Yep, certainly would. David Christopher good to talk to you. Thanks so much.